This video is a part of the how to start a YouTube channel in 2017 playlist. Click up here to learn more. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Wolfboy and in this video I want to talk to you guys who are wanting to start a YouTube channel in 2017 or late 2016. Now this review can be used further in the future, however this is meant for right now in 2017 or again or late 2016 depending on when I upload this and when you view it. So uh, this video will have a few main port parts. Um, and uh, this video itself has three main parts broken down into little sections. Uh, I will try and have the timestamps for everything down in the video description, as well as links to anything that I talk about in this video. So the basic outline is, firstly you need to have an idea, secondly you need to have equipment to carry out that idea, and then thirdly you need to have the audacity just to do it and to get it done. So we're going to be looking at those three items in depth today and then we'll also cover uh, separate more specific topics later in the future in this series. Um, yes, I am going to make this a complete series where I talk about the best microphones, the best video software solutions that I've tried personally, um, and give you guys some tips and tricks on how to get certain software for free for a limited time so you can try it out for yourself. So let's go ahead and start with number one, have an idea. Okay, having an idea is the most important thing about starting a YouTube channel no matter if it's gaming, tech, or beauty even. So this video is very open-ended and very... Uh, talking to every YouTuber out there who wants to start a YouTube channel, not just the gamer, not just the um, tech enthusiast. Uh, I will have specific videos for you guys coming out very soon. So this is very general. So you need to have an idea of what you want to do. And instead of just saying, and I'll, I will commonly refer to my thoughts as gaming, as that's the channel that I am trying to maintain, as well as a tech channel, and I'm trying to do both. Um, it works well for me, but it may not work well for you, and you have to decide that for yourself through trial and error. So you may think, oh, I want a gaming channel, but then you have to narrow it down. Do you want a PC gaming channel, a, you know, a Let's Play channel? Do you want a gaming channel where you talk over everything and like review games? What do you want to have your channel do? A simple way that you can do this is lay it out in a business plan. I know this is, seems like a lot of work and people have probably told you this before on how to grow quick on YouTube, but it's actually very important. Set up a business plan for the next five to ten years. I know thinking out that far may be a challenge for some people as they may not know what they're going to end up doing in five to ten years. But just plan that you are going to switch in two years time full time to YouTube. That's how I done it and when I made out my business plan, which if I still have it laying around I'll throw it on the screen now, um, or I'll even make up a rough one really quick. Um, but you need to make up a goal of what you want to achieve in one year's time, two years time, all the way up until the end of your goal, like the end of uh, your time. And you have to set it so that it's reasonable for yourself. Like don't set yourself to a million subscribers in year one and then just stop because you didn't get that goal. It's unrealistically a bad goal. Like, you can't achieve a million subscribers in this day and age of YouTube in a single year of being on YouTube. While it was possible several years ago, the YouTube space is so congested with users that, frankly, it's just not possible. The next thing is that you have to go through and 
figure out what you want to do, what your goal is at the end of the day. Do you want to entertain? Do you want to inform? You have to look at this and decide that for yourself. Because if you uh, make your users decide, they may end up deciding not to watch you at all. So let's go ahead and talk about the next topic. Because the first one is very broad and it's pretty much you have to have an idea and you have to set realistic goals for yourself for the next few years. Even if you just wanted to set it for the next few months and then reevaluate yourself, do it. Because setting yourself up for a goal will make you feel more enthusiastic and more pushing and you will feel that you have to push yourself more to achieve that goal. So number two on our list is that you have to have the equipment to carry out your idea. Now these can be broken down into several parts which we will in this video. Firstly you need to have great audio, great video, a computer that can handle the rendering, and software that can handle the uh, handle your workload. So let's go ahead and break down audio. Audio is a big thing. As you can tell from this, I am recording right now on my Samson Meteor microphone. However, I'm going to switch now to my Sony onboard microphone on my camera and let you hear how echoey it is in this room. Now, I do have my heater turned off, minus the one that's outside uh, and that's actually heating the whole house. Um, I have my heater turned off, but my camera is right beside my computer. So you have the jet engine that is my computer picking up the sound. So at some point I probably switched back to my microphone so that your guys' ears didn't bleed. Um, but you can definitely hear the difference between the two. You can hear, you know, over here you have, you know, the really crappy audio quality, and then over here you have the better audio quality. So. What I'm recording in currently is 1080p 60fps. Now this is the industry standard as of 2016. People have started to move to 4K 30, however due to the compression on YouTube, it's just not worth it. I say stick with 60fps because there is still some gain that can happen. So. As a rule of thumb, you should follow this. 1080, 60 is preferred. If your computer can't handle 1080, 60, do 720p, 60. If your computer cannot render 60 FPS at one time, switch down to 1080, 30 FPS, because people will still prefer that you are recording in 60 FPS if you can, but they are even better preferring that you are future-proofing your channel, or at least better futuring your channel um, with the 1080p. Again, 4K 30 FPS is not worth it. Wait until you can do 40, 60, or simply do uh, 1440p at 60 FPS. You always want to do progressive scan over interlaced scan. Interlaced will put lines in your video and can make it very choppy and very unpleasant to watch. Some of my videos that are on the older scale of things, you can check out this one up here um, for that, uh, are very choppy and do not look great at all, minus the fact that they are in 480p. For video, you always want progressive scan because it patches all of the video frames together as one whole frame rather than lines. This again makes the video more smooth and less choppy. Your computer is a big tool for you. For my recommendation, you need to have at least an R7 240 or a NVIDIA GTX 660 or higher. Now, while you could go with a 480 or something like that, it just isn't going to play today's games if you want to start gaming. And frankly, they don't offer nearly the performance that the 660 and R7 uh, 240 offer. 
those cards are about the same price and about the same performance. Actually, I got my R7 240 for around $46. I'll leave a link in the video description for that, um, as well as a RX, or sorry, a GTX uh, 660. I'll leave both in the video's description because uh, those are great cards and they work well. Um, however, they are very, very cheap on the low end. Um, so I would highly recommend trying to score a better graphics card um, through like eBay secondhand. Um, you can always check out, and I'll leave a link up there for him, uh, Tech Yes City, also known as Tech City now. Um, he goes through and does a lot of pr like really good builds that are under you know 500 and even under 200 sometimes. Uh, so you can take inspiration from him if you so desire. Um, I believe that your computer should at least have a quad core. Now this is a true quad core. So that means an i5 minimum. Do not try and do video editing on an i3. You will end up going insane and losing it. I tried doing this on a Celeron, which is a one core uh, hyper-threaded processor, so I, it essentially had two cores, but they were both really lowly clocked, and there was no overclocking headroom, and the video took hours to render. It was not worth it at all. I highly don't recommend getting anything under a uh, quad-core, which means anything under a Nivit or an AMD APU or under an i3. So you want to at least get an A8 APU from from AMD or on Intel you want at least an i5. You can of course get Xeons on the Intel side for a little bit cheaper. Again, check out Tech Yes City, also known as Tech City Brian up there. Tech check him out and uh, see his videos, especially the 775 to 771 mod, because that will save you a lot of money and get you a decent CPU that can handle video editing on the cheap. So check that out. Also, you can always look at low-end laptops um, that may have a quad core in them, uh, such as an i5 or such, uh, and those may do you well um, however, I would recommend sticking to a desktop for better airflow and future upgradability. So, now that we've talked about the computer, the audio, and your video quality, let's talk the most, the longest talk, I feel, which is your software. Firstly, you don't have to pay a million dollars nowadays to get great audio editing software. Right now, I'm recording on a software known as Audacity. It's completely free, and it's easy to use. You just plug and play, and it works. You may have to download a third-party plugin so that you can export to MP3, which most video editors only support MP3. Um, however, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, MP3 is the universal format to export video to. WAV is only on... Windows OGG is default for every system, however, it's most prominent on Linux, and on Mac they have AIF, A-I-F-F, -F, files. Don't ask, no idea, someone get Apple in, you know, this century. Thankfully, they do support MP3, so MP3, please... <laughs> Unless you're using Windows Movie Maker, which we'll talk about in a sec, please use MP3. You will thank me a million times. Now, let's talk about video editing. Um, because a lot of people don't have the money for good video editing software. So, Movie Maker is a great solution, and though it's not supported anymore, by Windows themselves, Microsoft Corporation, uh, you can still download it for free off of their website and then run it in compatibility mode. 
that's simple and easy to do and if anyone wants me to do a tutorial on it I can do so I am very excited to do these tutorials now Windows Movie Maker has changed a lot since I used it it's now called Windows Live Movie Maker and it's very basic there's layers and stuff like that but they're basic you have to put it in a linear faction so this is great if you're doing gameplay with voiceover but it renders in eh quality and also it's okay so it's not the best but if you have nothing else to use i used it you can use it too it won't kill you now, on the Mac side, I'm not leaving you guys out because I am an old-fashioned Mac fan. I love Mac. iMovie. iMovie is amazing because it's an all-in-one package. iMovie is there and ready for you to use as soon as you boot up your Mac for the first time. All you have to do is go to the Apple Store, download the latest updates, and get ready to go online. So simply download the iMovie package and you can automatically download, uh, you can automatically start putting the system together. It's kind of like a cut down version of Final Cut Pro, but better because you have all of the built in systems that Apple wants you to use and that makes it really simple to use. Um, I used iMovie on my phone whenever I was making vlogs and it was quick to render, it was fast in the background because I believe that they're using the same technology that Final Cut is where it starts rendering in the background uh, when you're starting to finish up your project. So it's great for low-end systems that you may have to take a little bit to render because it's already starting to render in the background. Now let's talk about graphics. Everyone is just kind of throwing up their uh, videos online and not worrying about thumbnails. I am actually going to start going through and thumbnailing all of my videos that haven't been thumbnailed. Now, this means that I have to be a good boy and go through and do this. But I just don't... You have to have the energy to want to go and do this. But Paint.net makes it very simple because they add layers, they add the ability to add transparent layers, and they add the ability to compress into PNG, JPEG, and many other formats. So this is great if you have a project with multiple layers that you need to get worked on. So all you have to do is go to link in the video description and find paint.net, download it, it's completely free. Again, this is great for you as a creator to start with, and then you can work on it later on. All right, let's touch on the very touchy subject of piracy. Now, I'm going to make a separate video about piracy later down the line, because this is a thing that I have admittedly done, and at some point in your your career you are going to do. Piracy is a real thing. However, it doesn't hurt the industry as much as people may want you to think. One person pirating a software will not drain, you know, a company's wallet. Million people pirating a software, it might do a little damage. If every one of their clients start pirating the software, that's when they're going to start hurting. So pirating a software to test it first before paying out $200, $300, $400, $600 $400, for a piece of software, if you have to do it, do it or download a demo first if that is applicable to you. Some softwares like Lightworks don't offer a free demo of their premium software, so you can't get all of the features out of the box and test them for like 30 or even 15 days because they want to lock that to a paid tier so that you can't test if it works or not on your system and if it doesn't then they can keep your whole all the money that you gave them and then you are out of a product so what you need to do is either download the trials for softwares or 
and this is up to you to figure out how. I am not encouraging anyone to do this. However, I have I am admitting that I have done it in the past, and I'm sure that everyone has who has ever tried to start a YouTube channel. Piracy is kind of a crime, but the fact is that if it helps you make a decision about the final product, it could be worth it. Because instead of that company charging you $600 for a product that doesn't work, you've tested the product on your system, you know how to use it, which means that if the next version comes out, you are more willing to pay for it. Just like me, I had been pirating uh, Sony Vegas Pro 13 for a while, and I just now purchased the Sony Vegas Pro 14. So that was a big jump for me, but a big upgrade in my channel. So let's talk about the future then. What can you do if you have a lot of money now, or you're looking to have a lot of money in the future? You can always upgrade to things like Sony Vegas, Corel Video Studio Pro. I used that for a while. It's a very basic linear uh, video manager. However, it does work well. Uh, another solution is Adobe Cloud. However, the more cores that you have does not mean the better performance. Uh, unlike the previous mentioned programs, you can also use Final Cut on the Mac side uh, because Final Cut Pro 10 and I believe 11 is coming out soon. Uh, Final Cut is the industry standard for Mac. Now, there are, of course, you know, your Pro Tools solutions that are $12,000 a month. Don't do that for a YouTube channel. If you are an industry professional, do it for that. But don't do it simply for a YouTube channel. It's not worth it. Um, because at the end of the day, even PewDiePie doesn't make enough to make up the $12,000 a year that he would have to spend on that program. So it's not worth it. Get a cheaper program if you are willing to pay every month, like Adobe Cloud, and spend about $150 to $170 a month rather than, you know, the $12,000. So at the end of the day, just do it. Just get out there, try and start, and if you fall, learn from your mistakes. Learn from the failures and keep growing. Keep going, keep pushing. Because at the end of the day, that is what a YouTube channel is about, is just keep going. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you liked this video and you are pumped for the next one like it, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. If you disliked it, or I guess hate anything, everything about life, or just hate my voice, whichever, Go ahead and dislike the video and tell me why in the comments below. Tell me what I can fix about my YouTube channel and my uh, video experience for you guys. If you guys want to, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay loyal, stay subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.